Right. Okay. So, uh, the market actually it was a, yesterday. I I keep telling you all uh, sell into the rally, sell into the rally, sell into the rallies. Uh. So I'm looking at uh, the guy, uh, uh, Tom Lee, and I I find him to be a bit unreliable. Uh. So I think I'm gonna follow Lance Armstrong's advice for 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 a while. Uh. Okay. Uh, I've been listening to Lance Armstrong for quite a while. He's quite good uh, in the technical analysis and stuff. Okay, so when I look at these, uh, this is what you call a fake rally, right? You know what's a fake rally, right? Okay, so it 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 rallies, but at the beginning it opens higher, but it comes down. So this is what you call a dump. This is what is the dump by the uh, market maker. So everybody got full thinking that it's gonna go up, but it came down. Okay. So the previous one was a setup for the dump, right? But people already started dumping beforehand. So people already smart, they started dumping. So how do you play this game? Uh? You get the fuck out, man. That's it. <laughs> right? You can see that they are dumping on the rallies, right? So if the sellers are not out of the market yet, uh, the market cannot go up. So this one just follow. If you are a trader, you want to follow the dump, basically. Okay? You want to start dumping also. You want to start uh, buying all these uh, insurance and all those stuff, okay? So what do I think? Uh, I already told you all, uh, first things first, September and October is both are seasonally, seasonally uh, down months, uh, bearish months. So think about it this way. Where are we now? We are in the first week of August. Actually, second week, is it? Yeah, we are in the... Actually, first week of August, and the third, we are, we still have three more weeks. Maybe we have three weeks to advance. Are we gonna advance? Who knows? Maybe I don't know. Um, but think of it this way. I want you to think of it this way. Yeah. Okay. Even it advances later to September. Even advances here. What do you think is gonna happen to the market? It's gonna be sold down September, right? Seasonally. Okay, so what kind of pattern is going to form? Is it going to form a very nice pattern? No, it's going to form a double top right here. And it's going to be even more bearish at the end of the of the whole thing. Right. So you created uh, a false, uh, this is a false breakout by the way. Okay, this is a false breakout. Huh? Wait, where did this line come from? Oh, here, here, okay. Wow, we managed to keep my old lines, huh? Some uh, this is a generally, generally this is a false breakout la. This is why I call a false breakout. Uh, sometimes my lines gets preserved. Sometimes they disappear. Uh, this new Yahoo is a bit uh, messy la. That's what I would think. Okay, so I do believe uh, looking at the fundamentals. Uh, okay, there's this possibility that this is gonna come down to maybe. Uh, 4,700 lah for my take. My take is around there. 4,007. If this rally fails, uh, it's going to come down to 4,007. Okay. If this is breach, uh, then 5,000 is breach. Uh, then uh, most likely is 4,000. I would say 4,007 uh, if the 5,000 level is breach. So this handle is going to be very critical. This one. The 5,000 level handle. Okay, this is going to be the most critical handle. The 5,000 level. If this is breached, then bye-bye. We are fucked. Right? All of us, we are fucked. All of us. Okay? Now, some of you will say, but Robert, the 50 MA is still above the 150 MA. According to you, is still an uptrend. So it's safe for us to buy the dip, right? Oh, hold on. Right. Take a look. This thing is sloping down. Whenever one of them slopes down, the uptrend is not intact. So we are not in an uptrend anymore. I declare that the S&P 500 has broken the uptrend. Okay. Uptrend is broken. Uh. I declare. Uh. This is my declaration. Uptrend is broken. You stop fucking around. Uh, and thinking that the market is going to keep going up. Okay. Stop fucking around and keep thinking that the market is going to keep going up. up, 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 up. No. Okay, the answer is no. It doesn't work that way, man. Okay. So this is my advice to you. My advice to you. I know some people 
some advisors are saying that it's going to keep going up okay i wouldn't take the risk lah. okay that's it for this one so second if this keeps coming down it's going to form a fucking death cross okay and when it forms the death cross we are fucked right okay when it forms the death cross we are somewhat fucked lah, i would say and it could lead to a more further 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 drop maybe 4005 who knows nobody knows what's going to happen okay so all i'm saying is that guys it's better to be safer on this side okay so what what, what does it mean does it mean sell all, all your accounts the answer is no don't sell your investments don't sell the stocks that you find are undervalued all it means is that there is this possibility that the market may draw down and you need cash to buy the, draw, the, the drawdowns right and later it's going to go up back again it's going to go back up it's been tried and tested look at this goes down and it goes back up this thing maybe go down and then it goes back up so you got to be prepared for this to touch this 4500 channel are you prepared do you have the money to buy in when it goes down there i do i don't i don't know the answer is you should right so sell on rallies right sell on rallies those of you who really earn money or you know you only lose a little bit of money sell on the rallies maybe you are buying this stock because you don't know what the hell it does and all this stuff sell on these rallies and then wait for the market to keep dropping right maybe to five thousand then you start buying four seven five then you start buying maybe here then maybe you start buying okay first of all this is a false breakout it is very bearish okay false breakouts are very bearish uh i don't really know whether the pattern still holds or not are we forming a new pattern but i know this is a three wave one two three four five then this is the corrective wave abc i guess this is abc a there's going to be a wave that goes up and then there's going to be a c that goes down like that usually this is what happens in the you know what i mean right okay uh elliot wave elliot wave yeah this is a three right so this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five um this is a this is definitely an a it cannot be a five then goes up but no it's an a and yeah that's an a or it could be that this is a this is b this is c and it's going to go keep going up forever are we going to do that i don't know most most of the time i don't think so i think this is going to come down okay so if you forget all my teachings uh, the teaching that you all should learn is actually head and shoulders uh. remember the head and shoulders pattern uh, it seems to recur 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 very often uh. okay the head and shoulders pattern that is very important for you all to understand okay uh congrats to uh colton uh. apparently his reading on wbd is correct <laughs> this is a time uh to raise money so i think before all this crash happened uh, colton from uh financially fit or what is the new channel i forgot later i'm going to post a link to him uh. he actually said that he was going to go for cash you know compounding capital yes this is colton's channel go and take a look okay I'm going to post a link below later. Uh, he talks about raising cash eh, before the before the crash. Eh, you take a look at his video. There was one video I was watching. He was, he was saying that he's going to raise cash. Okay. So he somehow, he predicted or he felt that the market was going to drop. Okay. So he got his guess right there. He also sold the WBD. Then I was like, no, I don't think you should sell WBD. I think you should keep it. Eh, he sold it then. Mm, in hindsight it was a good trade lah. okay it was a very good trade so i think he felt the weakness in the consumers and all those stuff already so he thinks that the stocks are going to go lower from here from what i get from him i think he thinks that he believes that the stocks they are going to go lower from here okay and then he does the valuations and all very careful he's more he's very careful <laughs> yeah he's very careful that he does the valuations very well so he's good lah, i guess okay some stocks he got it wrong maybe like cvs and all that but yeah all of all of us we got mistakes right we made mistakes okay 
uh, WBD, I would say the earnings is okay. It's not amazing, but it's not like super. It's not to die for. Okay, I'm gonna cover WBD later, I guess. I haven't posted the WBD video. I'm gonna talk about GS, uh, the US market first. So the US market is the one that's taking everybody's attention. So where is the US market gonna go, Robert? That's the question, right? So let me tell you something. It's very simple. You wanna look where the US market is gonna go? Just put it against Japanese yen, right? Okay, I already talked about this, right? So you wanna pull it back to December 2000, January 2024, the beginning of the year, and you see that you know they used to meet, right? And then got higher. Right, and then now they are playing catch up, so they're gonna have to close the gap, man. So, S and P five hundred has to go down, starts closing the gap. Okay, five thousand maybe, who knows? I don't know, right? Okay. So if we see, look at it here, S and P is a hundred and nine percent, uh, give or take. Hundred and nine percent. Um, it has to go to how many percent? 102%, so maybe another 5% dip, 102%, uh, 109%, 102%, what level is S&P 500 now, 5,200, divided by 109 times 102, yeah, somewhere about there, 4,850, 4,009 is where I believe, uh, the S&P 500 will drop to 4,009. Okay, so let me tell you something. Usually when all this comes down, all it goes to 5,000, all hell breaks loose. Lah. And the market somehow panics and, you know, it's going to, most of, there's, there's a possibility that it's going to sell down even lower than it should, right? Than the fair value. Okay, maybe 4,005. And then all the fears will come out, the session fears, carry trade fears, and all those stuff, they're going to, everything is going to be, uh, the media is going to put all this narrative to you, to feed the narrative, okay? But my advice to you all would be, like I said, you got to prepare some cash, man, right? If you have 30% cash position, then you are set. Let it drop, it's okay. You may want to take off some uh, of those uh, very risky uh, bets, right? Okay. So let me tell you something. If this market drops, uh, I'm going to earn more money than if the market goes up. Why? Because ever since S&P is 5,200, I have been buying put option spreads, bearish put option spreads. I bought it here and then the market kept going up. I was like, fuck. So I bought it here again. And the market keep going up. I bought it here again, and the market keep going up. So I bought it here again, and the market finally falls down. Okay, so I was actually expecting a top, but I was running out of uh, steam. I, I I I didn't believe so much. Uh, okay, so now my put option spreads they are starting to go positive. I was like, fuck me, man, this is bad. Okay. So yesterday there was a question uh, about IV. Uh, uh, options IV, okay, so i got to explain to you all a bit about this. Uh, I guess there's this uh, misconception that IV, that you got to do. So let's say you want to, it's, it's not a simple A or B or C. Options is never simple. Uh. Remember that. There's this thing called IV, implied volatility. Okay, when IV is higher, the option price is going to be higher. When IV is lower, the option price is going to be cheaper. Okay, that's all you got to remember. IV high, expensive. IV low, cheap. Right. Generally, you want to sell. Uh, uh, you want to sell uh, put options. Uh, when the IV is above fifty-five, lah. Okay. You want to buy options when the IV is below for 50 like can I think you can buy like, if you have a you can buy below 50 right so basically the IV determines the price so what determines the IV the movement of the stock is the stock very volatile goes up goes down goes up goes down goes up goes down goes up goes down like uh 
like a mean coin like that, like a shit coin. That is very volatile. Or if the stock is very slow moving, very steady, don't move a lot, very steady. What 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 stock is very steady? Give me a stock that's very steady. Netflix is steady, man. Right. Take a look at the IV compared to the um uh that guy. See the IV is lower, right? The IV is lower. Okay? The IV is lower. For Netflix. Right. The closer it is, the more the more volatile is it. The longer it is, the less volatile is it. So IV you gotta you gotta you gotta start uh so you wanna buy IVs when they are like this, right? <coughs> when they are cheap, you wanna buy. You don't wanna sell when it's cheap. This is cheap, right? Okay. So in IBKR we have this called IV percentile. Okay. A percentile basically just takes up all the numbers. That has been going all the in, in, implied volatility, the data that has been in the past 52 weeks, or you can put 26 weeks. That's up to you, right? Past one year or past half year, and then it lines up the the the, the number. So, oh, you are in the 75th percentile, so 75 percent the percentile. That means, wow, this IV uh, is 75 percent higher than the 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 other. Is the 75 percent so you line it up so it's considered quite high la. you are 75 percent higher than the other uh, ivs that has happened that has been recorded if you are 10 percent or oh, that means you are very uh, very low that means you're only 10 percent higher than all the ivs that has been recorded right okay so you line it up lah. Let's what 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 percentile does is actually you line up the numbers uh. How do I do this uh? Let's do it. Use an Excel word so you understand what I mean uh. Excel. No, you know what? I don't want to teach you about options. Uh. You're going to learn by yourself. Uh. I I remember that time I teach about options. Somebody uh. Somebody made some uh very uh, nasty comments. Uh. I don't like it. So I'm not going to teach about options anymore. That's it for today. Thank you very much.